their money out? Because their co-workers were saying they pulled their money out. Well, their co-workers are experts in finance. Right? And that's why their co-workers are working at a job that pays a minimum wage. Right? If they were so-called financial experts, what are they doing working there with that guy? What I'm saying is be very careful of what advice you take and from whom you're taking it. Are they giving you that advice for your benefit? Or for their benefit? See, if they pulled their money out, they sure as heck aren't going to tell you to leave yours in. Do you think they wanted you to end up with this? When all they're going to get is this? Make sense? Mm -hmm. So what does this have to do with insurance? Well, it has everything to do with insurance. Because I learned the hard way. How much time we got left? About a oh, half an hour. Okay. Eh, 25 minutes. We'll keep them till 2. Well, I can get this done. That's easy. <laughs> uh, 1993. My wife and I found out we were gonna, that she was pregnant with our first child. We were both teachers and coaches. And we got talking to each other and said, you know, we got this baby on the way. We got a house payment. We got a car payment. We got all these bills every month. Pretty soon we're going to have this baby. We'll have to pay for daycare and diapers and formula and all that stuff. What is going to happen if something happens to one of us? We die of cancer. We get killed in a car accident. Any of that kind of stuff. Can't happen, man. Can't happen. So we said, man, we got to go get some life insurance. You see, I wanted to make sure if something happened to me, there's at least enough money there so that I could pay off the debts and leave some money behind for my wife to finish raising the baby. Because if I didn't leave anything behind for her, how is she going to make the house payment, the car payment, pay all the bills, daycare, diapers, formula on just one check? When it's tough enough to do it on two, right? So we called an insurance agent. This guy was to our house before I could hang up the phone. See, you usually don't call them. They're calling you, right? So he gets to our house, sitting at my dining room table. He's drinking my coffee. He says, Mick and Jody, how much can you afford to spend for life insurance each month? He said, can you afford $100 a month? And I'm thinking to myself, why is he asking me how much I can afford to spend for life insurance? When I went and bought my car insurance and my house insurance, they didn't ask me how much I could afford. They told me what it was going to cost. Right? Anyway, he says, can you afford $100 a month? I says, no, we can't afford $100 a month. We're just teachers and coaches. We can't afford that much. We got daycare and diapers and formula and all those bills coming on top of what we have been paying. We can't afford $100 a month for life insurance. He says, well, how about 90? No, I can't afford 90. How about 80? No, I can't afford 80. Now, who invited him to my house? And he gets there, and I'm telling him, what? Can't afford it. Don't make much sense, does it? I'm telling him no. So I'm starting to feel like crap. And finally, I says, okay, um, can't afford 80. He says, well, how about $72 a month? Okay, I will do $72 a month. I can't keep saying no, right? I know I need it. So $72 a month. He says, Vic and Jody, for $72 a month, here's what we can give you. My marker's going now. I'm on board. $72 a month. We can get you... $50,000 of insurance each. The great thing about this insurance is we're going to take part of the money every month. We're going to use it to pay for the cost of the insurance. We're going to take another part of the money and we're going to put it into a savings account. So if you don't die when you retire, 
there's going to be $50,000 in savings here. Now remember, I was a math teacher and basketball coach, right? I like numbers. I saw that and I'm like, well, this is pretty simple. If I do die, my wife gets 50. If we don't die, we get 50. Basically, we get free insurance for the next 40 years. Sign us up. Right? Because either way, I was going to get my 50 back. Make sense? Then my wife's high school track coach comes to our house three years later. Shows us the rule of 72. Starts gathering all of our financial information to do a free financial needs analysis for us to show us how much money we're really going to need to retire. Show us how to get our debt paid off as fast as possible. And show us if we need life insurance, how much we really need and the most affordable way to get it. So as he's gathering this information, he says, Mick and Jody, do you guys have life insurance? We said, yeah. He says, do you have the policies handy by chance? I said, yep, I'll go get them. I bring them, throw them on the table to him. He said, Mick and Jody, what did they tell you about this savings account? I said, what do you mean? Isn't it just like a savings account at the bank? He said, well, not quite. It's actually the world's worst savings plan by a mile. Nothing comes a close second or third to being as bad as this savings plan is for four primary reasons. Number one, for the first uh, three to five years, no money gets deposited in the savings. Now look at your Rule 72 sheet. When's the most important time to have money in savings? Early years or late years? Early. So those doubling periods can take over, right? The first three to five years, nothing goes into savings. That's because all the money that could or should have went into savings is used to pay commissions to the agents who sell the policies. When they do start to put money in the savings, it pays 2 to 4% interest. What's inflation? At least 4. 3, 4, 5? Mm -hmm. More recently, it's closer to 3, but if you look back over the last 40 years, it's closer to 5. Well, my savings is only making 2 to 4, but inflation is historically four to five. Am I making money or losing money? I'm not even keeping up with inflation, am I? Is that a good long-term savings plan? I do remember asking if I need, I said if an emergency came up, my wife and I need to get some money out of the savings. Let's say transmission goes out of the car, and we need to get some money out of there. Can we take money out of that savings before retirement? He said, oh yeah, no problem. You just got to pay six to eight percent interest tomorrow. I remember, I was a math teacher and basketball coach. What was my knowledge of money and financial stuff? As close to zero as they come. Did he answer my question? He did, didn't he? But let's go just one tiny step further and think about this. Who in their right mind would pay interest to borrow your own money? <laughs> Makes no sense, does it? But they sell it as a good thing. Do you know why you have to borrow it? You don't borrow things that you own, do you? Read one of those policies. It says right in there that the savings is owned by, not you, by the insurance company. That's why you don't have to pay taxes on it while it's in there, because you can't pay taxes on something you don't own, right? And you, don't have, and you have to pay interest to borrow it, because you don't own it. They own it while it's in there. But here was the worst part. My wife's high school track coach showed us, said, Mick and Jody, let's say Mick died, and there was $10,000 in that savings account. Jody, what do you get? Now, common sense would say she 